Okay, what I'm going to do in this quick little video is demonstrate how to use um, tables in HTML. I'm going to use JS Fiddle to do that. And what JS Fiddle allows you to do is put little segments of code and uh, CSS in, and you can get a preview of what it's going to look like. Uh, so uh, I can type HTML up here. I can type some corresponding CSS over here in the CSS panel, and I'll get a preview of what that little section of HTML is going to look like. Okay, so to insert a table, what we do is we use the table tag. And so the table means that, uh, that means that the table is going to start. Then each table has a table row. And so you'd use TR for each row of the table. Within that row, what we're going to do is make the first row of our table a heading row. And so what you use is the TH tag for each heading in that. So my first column is going to have a series of names, and so my table heading is going to be name. Then you'll see my second heading is going to be their email address. And so you can see down in the preview that I've now got a table set up, and if I push the run button to update, a table set up where the first column is name, and the second column is their email address, and then the third thing I'm going to add is the suburb that they live in. And so my row now has three headings across it, the name, the email, and the suburb. Then I'm going to start a new row. So table row again. And on my next row, instead of putting a heading, what I'm going to do is put a table data element, so an actual item of data. And so the first name, uh, the first column is going to contain the person's name, which is Tony. Then I'm going to put their email, so the second column is going to have the email, and that's just going to be a dummy email I'm setting up, Tony at email.com, and then the third thing is going to be their suburb, and Tony lives in Sydney, and so you can see I've set up now a table with a heading and three data elements, Tony, Tony email, and Sydney, and so I've now got two rows in my table, and you can see down here on the preview, if I update it with the run button, I've got my first row with the headings in it and the second row with the data in it. If you want to add another row, that's as easy as copying and pasting the table row element. And so when I now paste this down the bottom here, I'm going to put a space between each row in my HTML. You can see I can come down to my third row and I can edit this. So this one here, I'm going to say that my second person is Sarah, and oh, that's not a suburb, that's a place, let's go, actually it doesn't matter, let's go with Mexico, I might change my suburb to country, and you can see how as I'm editing this, my table will also update, so I've changed my third heading to country, and then Tony lives in Australia, and Sarah lives in Mexico, so for each row, you would simply copy and paste those five uh, elements, the table row, the three data elements, and then the closing uh, row. So you could copy that five rows, paste it in, and then you can edit this data element to have anonymous, the new person. And we'll make this anonymous, and they can live in New Zealand, <coughs> and so on. Now I've got a couple of extra elements here I'm just going to copy and paste into my table that I've already pre-written, just so I can get a couple of quick rows in my table. Okay, and so now I've got a table here with five rows. And that's great, but it's not very pretty. So now what we're going to do is add some CSS to actually style this. So I'm going to come over to the CSS. You would normally put this into a separate CSS file, so you'd have your HTML files, and then you'd have a separate CSS file linked to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some borders. So I want my table, um, my table headings, and my table data elements to all have a border. So I've listed those three elements, and then we simply say the style for the border. And so our border is going to be one pixel. Uh, we're going to make it a solid border and we're going to make it grey, so I'm just going to use the hash code for grey. And then you can see here it's got a couple of spots where it wants spaces, and I need a semicolon at the end. And so I've now set up a border around my table, 
each of the table headings and each of the table data elements. And when I preview this, so if I run that, you'll see I now get the table border around each of those elements. So my table has this big border, my table headings have these squares around them, and then my table data elements also have a square around them. Now that looks a little bit dodgy because there's that double border around it. And so there's another funky style that you can add that will uh, fix that problem. And so what that is, is called border collapse. And what you do is you, you set the border collapse to collapse. And so whenever we now have a double border, if we run our little preview, you'll see that all of those double borders have now collapsed. Now I'm going to add some styling to the individual table. So we can set widths, we can set colors, all sorts of things. So the first thing I'm going to do to my table is set a width. Now I'm going to set it to 80%, which means that that's going to now take up, the table's going to take up 80% of the element that the table exists in. So if you've got it sitting inside of a, a container div, then the table is going to go to the width of 80% of that container div. We can also set the alignment for our table. Now, if we set the align to center for our table, if we run that, is that actually on the table element? Ah, maybe you can't set the alignment in the table element. You probably can only set that for the table data. Let's try, ah, oh, it's gonna be text align, isn't it, of course? Text align is the name of the CSS. So when we set the text line equal to the center, what that's going to do is it's actually not going to center the table, but it's going to center each of the text elements inside of the table. And there you go. You can't actually put text align on the table. You would actually have to put that on the table data element, so the TD element. So the way to actually align a table is actually by setting the margins. So what you can do is you can set the margin the left margin is going to become set automatically, and so margin left auto. And what that's going to do is give you a left-hand margin, which is automatically created. So when we preview that, you'll see that the table will jump all the way over to the right-hand side. So to jump it back into the middle, what we want to do is set the margin right also equal to auto and put our spaces in the right place. And so what that's going to do is then set a right margin and a left margin and put the table down the center of our page. Now we want to start to style some of our heading elements. So we've aligned our table there. So to pretty up the heading a bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the table header elements and I'm going to put a background color onto the table heading elements. So to do that, we just use background color as our style tag we want to address and I'm going to use the RGBA color scheme. So RGBA allows you to enter in four numbers which are going to represent the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue and the amount of alpha. So I'm going to say that my amount of red is zero, my amount of green is 100, my amount of blue is 100 and my alpha is going to be 0 0.4. So the alpha is how transparent it is. And so when I now run this, I'm going to get a background color. You'll see across my table heading element here where I've got no red. I've got a mix of green and blue as my color. And then the alpha content is 0 0.4. Now, <laughs> what I also want to do is set every second row to actually have a background color as well, just to style my table a bit more. And so what I'm now going to do is use my table row element, but I'm going to add an extra property to that. And the property I'm going to add is the nth child. And so this means that you can address a number in the nth, so the third or the fourth or the sixth child element of that. And instead of picking out a number there, I'm just going to say every odd one, every odd row, is going to pick up this style. So the nth child odd means that the odd rows are now going to pick up whatever style I put in here. So I'm now going to set my background color to a lighter version of my color above. So RGBA 
So instead of being 0, 100, 100, 100, what I'm going to do is say I'm going to say 0, 200. Uh, remember the colour is out of 255, so you pick a number between 0 and 255. And then I'm going to set an alpha property to it. And so you can now see I've set up, oh, and I've missed a couple of semicolons there at the end of my rows. So I'll put those in. And so now my nth row, you can see, have this lighter colour green in them as well. So I've now set up a table row, the odd rows now have this lighter colour, the header row has a slightly darker version of the same colour. So still green and blue mixed together, but less green and blue, or a darker version of green, green and blue, rather than the more fluorescent version. Okay, there's one more style I want to head up, and that's going to be my hover. So when I hover over a row, you'll see at the moment when I move over my table cell, uh, it doesn't actually do anything. Uh, so what I want to do is actually set up a hover property for my table row so that when I hover over one of these rows it actually looks like it's got a selector on it. So I'm going to again address my table row but the property I'm going to address is the hover property. And so table row hover that means when I hover over the top of that I'm going to change the background colour of that table row that I'm hovering over and I'll use the RGBA colour scheme again. Remember you could use a hashtag in here or you could use a name if you wanted to and I'm just going to make it grey so that means I'm going to use 128, 128, 128 because that's a mix of red, green and blue and I'll stick with my alpha property of 0 0.4 and so now I've got a hover property when I run these stars you'll see that when I come back over to my preview and I hover over those rows it now has a little grey selector over it. Now you can play around with these colours, obviously by changing the numbers in the background colours, or by adding text colours and so on, you could improve the look of this uh, even more. You could change the font of this, it, it by default will pick up the font that you've set for your whole document anyway, so you probably don't want to change the font within your individual table. Uh, you could set a heading font for the TH um, one, so you could set up a, a font family in here that uses a different font for your headers, but you can play around with the colours and so on in order to get a different effect on your table. Alright, so that's how you would add and edit a table using HTML and then style it using CSS.